believe in your will and trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death, so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Raymond into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One, you are mercy itself. By dying you unlocked the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive Raymond his sins and grant him a place of happiness, light and peace in the kingdom of your glory, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord, let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let the Lord shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
acknowledgement and forgiveness. So it wasn't always picture perfect. I learned that things aren't defined by your past. It's unconditional love. If you're facing inner demons or going through something, who is anyone to judge? So growing up, I know it wasn't always what I wanted to be, but then it ended up being exactly what it's supposed to be. As we all know, my dad was fighting cancer. It was a very short battle, barely three months. But there's one thing I wish everyone could have witnessed, and it was his optimism. He never lost hope, never had any doubts. So dad, thank you for showing me and the boys that there's nothing wrong with being optimistic when all odds are against you. And thank you for capturing all the moments, making the slides show, show me that I can relive my childhood, remember the good times, and remember you forever. Thank you for everything. After tomorrow, I'll be forced to move on somehow and start a new chapter in my life without you. But I'll always love you, and I will never forget you. His youngest sister. Ray was a loving and caring father, grandfather, brother, and friend. He worked very hard to provide for his family. He was a hands-on person who kept himself busy all the time. He liked to do manual labor, working outside, driving a bus, or a cab. He enjoyed interacting and conversing with people. One time I called him, he was on a Napa wine tour with a tourist couple and sends me a random photo of the couple. He probably gave them a ride in his car and they ended up touring Napa with them. Ray was a lovely, energetic, lively and energetic and very optimistic person. There was always full of excitement in his voice. Every time I see him, he would always ask, how are the kids doing? And when he sees the sisters, his favorite line is, I don't even have one of your sisters. <laughs> I wish I could translate it in English, but it's difficult. But when he says it, it's a it makes us all laugh. My brother, my sisters, and I would occasionally meet up for lunch in San Francisco. Ray would always give us a free cab ride back to our cars or the ferry station. One thing, one thing about Ray, he never failed to send his greetings to all of the sisters on our birthdays every year. I remember growing up in the Philippines, I was scared of him. I would run back inside the house every time I see him coming home because my parents didn't allow us to play outside. As I got older, I felt a sense of comfort and I grew closer to Ray. I found him easy to talk to and fun to be around with. He was always one call away and I will miss that the most. Ray loved his, loved his kids so much, I remember him bringing his kids breakfast, took their car in for service, for cleanup after a party. Ray was always available to help them out. And, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to put into words what my dad meant to me, um, but I'll try. My dad was a very simple person. He enjoyed everyone's company, and he, li he lived to spend time with his kids and grandkids. He was there anytime you needed him, whether it was something as simple as fixing a hinged door, or like in my case, fixing a flat tire, or calling AAA to help me get my car towed. His definition of fun was non-stop working, and he provided for his family whenever he could. He was forever an optimist. He was positive even during his last few months. Never letting his condition break him down or change his attitude or taking his ability to smile or laugh. It is hard seeing when your father go through the ordeal he went through, but it's comforting to know that we are with him until the end. Life is too short. Appreciate time with your family, even a call or text. We'll never know why my dad was called so soon. 
But at least I know he's in a better place. And like Father said, he is home. I didn't prepare myself to say anything. I guess I'm not usually the one to be open about feelings and uh, my heart, but it's for my dad. And I guess what I wanted to say was things I wish I could have told him and just want to talk to him again. Um, one of my favorite moments with him was uh, he was always a driver, cab, bus. And I thought it was funny because I used to be a driver as well. Um, I used to deliver pizza, food, or uh, Uber Eats and uh, caviar. And I thought it was funny because I, I felt like I was my dad back in the day. And uh, <laughs> we'd FaceTime almost every night, every time I drove because both of us were just driving. We'd be in San Francisco, he'd ask me where I am. <laughs> I'd uh, tell him, what you know what? And then he'd tell me a funny story <laughs> about him being around that area. <laughs> we laugh about it. And then when I tell him where I'm going or what delivery I'm going to, <laughs> he would tell me shortcuts. <laughs> But I had no idea what he was saying because I don't know San Francisco like that. <laughs> but I just love talking to him. And, uh, I think that was my favorite bond with him because that was his life. That's what he lived for, driving, being out there in San Francisco. And uh, it was me and him out there. We crossed paths a few times, we say hi. And I wish I could just talk to him about that moment, because we never got to. We never had the chance to just reminisce on how we were and our relationship. Um, I know my dad missed a big chunk of my childhood around ages four to maybe 12. But I never, uh, I was never, never bothered me. Um, I just, maybe I was too young, but, or maybe I just, I don't know, I just didn't mind. I just figured that's what life was, and that's, it is what it is, I guess. Um, and yeah. having a deal, yeah. all I wanted from, my dad and him. I just wanted my dad to witness and experience Theo growing up because he's my son. And he wasn't there for me. And I just wanted him to make up for lost time. To me, that, that's what hurts me the most, Mommy. because we had that chance. Uh -huh. And I wanted him to see me grow up as a father, to see Theo grow up. I'm going to end it with uh, one of my favorite voice notes from him. He sent me probably over 100 voice notes the past few years. I haven't gone through all of them, but this was uh, one of my favorites because uh, he just greeted me for my birthday and Theo's birthday is two and a half weeks away from me, so he's also greeting him. But hearing his voice always just makes me cry. I thought it would be nice for you. All of yours voice again. Um, I just want uh, 
Yeah, mom, yeah. I didn't get the film this morning. So uh, please uh, concur when you have a chance, okay? But uh, just to uh, listen to you, okay? But I love you. I hope you have a good one yesterday. We're so grateful we'll see you tonight. Thank you. See you. Peace out to the video. And it's happy birthday, too. Bye. Thank you, guys. That, uh, you know, Uncle Ray shared that we should not do pour water and uh, fiber. So that was the most recent. But, um, and I also remember Uncle Ray living with us in um, my mom and Uncle Rick's uh, house for a bit. So I was seeing him in the morning and at night, and uh, I think he was going through tough times. And every time I saw him, he always wanted to kind of teach me something. Like, don't do this, don't do that, which, that's, you know, I mean, I'll keep it to my heart, the things he taught me. You know, he, he wanted to make sure that, of course, I didn't do those things to him, so. He, so he showed me not to pour water in the fiery grill, and he also taught me words, uh, things that, when I was growing, I shouldn't be doing. So, thank you for that. Um, and then, of course, the youngest, the younger part of my years is, uh, I think I was, I just turned 16. And I would spend time with my cousins. I was the eldest out of the cousins, Christian, Don, Daisy, Nicole. And um, I would spend time in their house. That was my memor most memorable time because, you know, I was a teenager and I just started learning how to drive. I just got my license and I'm the eldest out of the cousins. So Auntie Julie and Uncle Ray would leave me to watch the kids. But the best part was they would hand me the key to their car <laughs> and some money to take out the cousins because I had the eldest. Julian was too young, so he stayed with someone. With that. So what I what did I learn first? First, it was nice because there's no adults. I was the adult, 16 with a bunch of kids. And they allowed me to do to take care of them. I said carefully, no, it drives differently. You're probably speeding and heavy foot on the gas. I said, how would you know? <laughs> but yes, he knew. And uh, I was, you know, 16, you're heavy foot. And so I just learned that he really has an appreciation for driving, and he knew that um, I was heavy on the foot, on the gas. So I've learned how to drive carefully too because of already. Because I said, um, even if he, there, he, we're not, he's not there, or no adults watching, he knew that I was kind of driving pretty dangerously with my younger cousins in the car. So a lot of fun memories, a lot of uh, learned lessons from Uncle Ray. But uh, you know, I always remember him as a funny guy the funny uncle because I'm surrounded by aunties, aunties and parties, right? They're all sisters and he was the only uncle. So when you're with the aunties, it's all drama. And, you know, <laughs> it's all cheese means, it's all gossip. But when Uncle Ray's there, it's all comedy. So Uncle Ray, thank you for bringing those memories to my life. We love you and we'll always remember you.
positive and taking pictures. So, um, hope everyone does that too. It takes that if they were to run anything from him, it's that. Uh, but again, thank you. Um, there's food and beverages outside.